Let me ask break on Frank Trick. Today we're talking to Soa, the Hulk. Last minute, well, I don't, I don't want to say last minute, but I guess last minute, uh, opponent change. You're fighting Walt Harris now. Um, is there that much of a difference between him and your other opponent? Um, they both got the same style, so um, uh, they're both southpaw, so um, it's perfect for, for what I've been training in, so I didn't really have to change much. Um, so everything was just, you know, we just kept everything the same, so... Is perfect. it? Did you get offered a couple different opponents as a as a as a change, or was Walt the only name that was given to you? Um, I, I'm not sure. Uh, Paradigm, uh, my management team, uh, uh, contacted me and, and said that uh, Walt Harris was the guy. So, um, okay. so it wasn't. So I didn't. Yep. So well, whether they spoke about different opponents, um, other different opponents, I'm not sure. But um, I didn't really bother me. So, well, the reason why I asked is because both opponents really are similar. It was almost like once one guy got hurt, the other guy was picked to match his style so that you would have the exact same guy in front of you kind of thing. And I was wondering yeah. if, that was a, if that was a promotion, a UFC decision, or if your management team took it over and said, no, here, you know, whatever. They might have given them five names and they they it down to Walt and that's all you knew about was Walt. You didn't have any other options as far as you know. Yeah, yeah well, I just got told it was Walt. <laughs> yeah. And then... Uh... I said, yep, bring it on. So, so well, it was, it was a- I will say this about Paradigm: if, if they were given a bunch of names, and they did, made the decision to, to put the give it to Walt, I, I want to congratulate them on two things. One, not stressing you out about hey, here's the five guys or here's the three guys that are offering in replacement, and having you stress about which one you're going to pick. They took all that burden yep. off of you. And two, picking the guy that most similarly matched up with your other opponent, so that now yep. you have you have the ability to be able to go. I don't have to change anything. I, it's just, it's just, it's another guy that does the exact same thing. So it actually, it's actually good for you in the sense that the yeah. train camp goes on, goes forward. Yeah, um, yeah, well, yeah. If that might have been the case, um, but uh, but yeah, but it, it was kind of worked worked well with me because uh, they're both the same style. So, um, hey, you're you're in Phuket right now, is that correct? Yeah, I'm uh, at AKA with uh, AKA Thailand with Mike Swig. And how long have you been out there? Oh, I've been out here for a while. I, I came here uh, when I was 12 weeks out for a couple of weeks just to, uh, I was going to do my camp in Australia, but uh, and then, I, then I went back to Australia for about a week and I thought, no, nah, I've got to come back to to, uh, to Thailand and um, I, I've been here ever since. So, um, but it's been great. Uh, not only um, when I was here, there wasn't any heavyweights over here, but then I brought in two Iranian guys. Uh, one's a pro boxer and a high level wrestler. And the other guy's Amir. He's a two-time gold medalist, uh, Greco uh, Greco Roman. Oh. Um, and yeah, so he's uh, yeah, beat, he's beat all the Russians, and and the, it's, he's he's crazy. But uh, and he's a heavyweight, um, and he he's probably looking to, to they're probably looking to push him push him into the UFC as well. But um, having him, them two, kind of grinding every day, and obviously obviously Thailand's got the the best you know kind of stand up with uh, with kickboxing and Thai fighting, so. It's uh, worked well, and um, and, and I've just soaked up a lot of their knowledge and stuff. So it's, it was perfect for me, and it's been good. So, okay, first now, when you're in Australia, who do you train with when you're when you're in Australia? Uh, I've got I've got a camp. Usually, sometimes I'll, I'll pop over to 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 do a camp with Mark, mm-hmm. and, um, and and or usually, um, you know, if I if that last fight for the Jared Rushold fight. I didn't get much time to, to go to get into a good wrestling camp, um, but um, so I kind of did that in Australia, and, and uh, I go to different gyms where um, different BJJ gyms, the wrestling gyms, um, CrossFit gyms, and, and stuff like that. So, but this has kind of been good because it's all in one thing. So um, the AKA facilities over here is unbelievable. It's crazy what Mike's doing with the guys over here. It's it's, it's awesome. That's what I heard. Everyone keeps telling me that you get a chance to travel even on vacation. Got stop by Phuket and go see AKA because. It's an outstanding, an outstanding facility. Now, you're there. Do you normally do a 12 week training camp, or are your camps usually a little bit shorter? Well, I, 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 well, I came here 12 weeks out. Then I went back to Australia for about a week or, or maybe two weeks. Then I came back for the eight weeks. Okay. And, okay. Uh, and I normally I normally start at eight weeks out, uh, seven eight weeks out, and and that. But uh, I've been here ever since. I'm I'm already on weight, so I don't have to oh. drop any weight for the fight. So it's perfect and. Uh, because all you do is just wake up, you train, you come home, sleep, you wake up, train, come home, sleep. So everything's focused on 
on on just training, so which is perfect. When you say yeah. come home and sleep, are you going home to a hotel or do you, are you guys staying in the dorms? What, what do you mean when you go home and sleep? Um, I, I'm just staying in a hotel. Um, the hotel is about thirty dollars a day, so it's really. Oh. Uh, but it's actually a nice, nice hotel. So um, with the pool and stuff. But uh, I mean, some other fighters they stay um, in in apartments where I think it's about three hundred dollars for a month. And uh, oh, but you've got so many fighters coming in and out and stuff um, through throughout the the gym, so you chop and change. But no, it's, it's the facilities here is is next to none. It's kind of the best the best facilities I've, I've been in for a while. Um, the AKA oh. they've got uh, different sections. The matted area is massive. Um, then they've got the outside, the two massive rings, and and it's a massive floor space for for kickbox for the tie um, tie classes. Then they've got strength and conditioning classes. They've got air dines. They've got um, um, ellipticals. They've got the static static yard. Um, um, hammer strength stuff, so everything's all brand new. It's not second hand. And then they've got, uh, you know, then they've got the cafe. Then they've got uh, within four and five months, they've got uh, the facilities for people for the fighters that can stay in in, in in there as well. So it's it's awesome. It's awesome facilities here. Mike's done really well. Uh, what do you do for food? Because you're saying you're staying in a hotel, so that means you're not in the apartment. The apartment you assume would have a, a refrigerator, a stove, you know, an oven, able to cook your and prepare your own meals. You're in a hotel. Are you having to eat out every single meal, or, or is there a place for you to prepare your own meals? Well, right next door uh, to where I am is uh, is a muscle bar. So um, I actually go there next door, and they prepare my meals for me. Um, so and it takes five minutes, and, and they know exactly what I eat every day, um, and it's and it's cheap as well. So um, they have my fish and my chicken and and, uh, and my rice and my vegetables and that and all prepared. So. Um, it's not really expensive. It's it's really really cheap. Um, it, like four dollars a you know, a meal. So, um, and then the water's cheap. Everything's cheap here. So, um, and then I just grab it, take it to my room, I eat it, and then uh, have a nap, and then ready for the next session. Do you, if you had a figure, I know I'm sure you haven't done it yet, but just sit on the top of your head. If you go, if you stay in Australia and had a training camp, and you now you've been in a training camp in Phuket. Is it pretty comparable in price as far as all the driving that you would have to do to get to different gyms and get everything done and the, the headache <clears> of the travel and being on the road in Australia versus just walking from the from your, your hotel straight to your straight to the gym? Like is it about comparably priced by the time it's all said and done? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the the pet obviously petrol and over in Australia is, is, is dearer, like uh, then you got food and then you know, um, then you've got to go from one gym to another gym and um, but over here, you, you hire a, a motorbike, so a scooter, so you, you're cruising around in a scooter. Petrol is cheap, so basically, um, you know, of you know, obviously, aka looking after me as well. So I don't it doesn't really cost me anything apart from food and uh, and uh, you know that's it. Um, but and then the training is uh, is is on just on another level to what uh, what I was doing over in Australia. So and and, and I'm just concentrating on on fighting. That's it. You know, yeah. and uh, and we see that Mike's got a good thing with with their with their program that he's brought over here from AK in in, in uh, San Jose. It's exactly the same thing, the same thing, air dine thing, the same elliptical workouts that they do. And I, now I know exactly why Kane and DC and the guys from AKA uh, every time they walk into that octagon, they're going three five minute rounds flat out or championship rounds five minute rounds uh, flat out and uh and not gassing they're just you know so i'm a bit desa- i'm doing exactly the same thing as kane but uh you know just um it's it's awesome you know i'm, I'm uh i'm pushing the pace on on uh on, you know in, in the training and uh, in the sparring and that as well so um but the first week that these iranian guys came over um and mia um uh, it was uh it was a nightmare but now I'm, I'm hanging up with them guys because I'm taking my my wrestling level to my wrestling to another level to to their level. So, so um, but it's much better now than, than what it was when they when they first came over. Yeah, it's it's the thing about wrestling is is time in. It's like with boxing. It's like with kickboxing. It's time in. What grappling really is about understanding how the sport moves, where the body goes, and really getting that 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 proper technique over and over again. Where a lot of the, you know, wrestling is separate, but has the same mindset as boxing, where it's time in the actual sport. The more time you spend just pure wrestling, the better you're going to be. And a lot of it's not really technically speaking of, of how do I hit a high crotch, how do I hit a double leg, because you don't have to worry about that stuff. You're talking about 
not getting punched, not getting kneed, not getting kicked as you go for a shot, or catching a guy with a couple punches as he shoots on you and slowing him down, and that's part of your sprawl. The more you work on it, the better it gets. So you're a great athlete. And so I see that after a week of spending some time with some high-caliber wrestlers in MMA, yeah. you'll be able to figure it out quite easily, like what you got to do and how things work. Does that give yeah. you a lot of confidence? In, 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 and, of course, you have a, you know you, you fought uh, uh, Daniel Cormier years ago, so you kind of know – what it was like to fight him back, you know, back a while ago. Um, hold on, let me look at my notes. You fought him back in 2010, November 2010. So you know yeah. what it's like to, to battle against a high caliber wrestler. Do you feel like now that that you wish you had had these guys around a lot sooner, these arrangements around a lot sooner, and, and being a part of your camp all the time, you know, years ago? Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, I'm taking these guys to Sydney as well for the um, for the fight as well. So um, I just kind of want to be around these guys. So after the fight, then I'm going to head back to AKA Thailand um, and just continue this uh, and just continue getting better. So I just want to, um, even if I'm back in Perth, I'm going to I'm, I'm taking these guys everywhere I go because uh, they they they're obviously in Iran. They're now telling me the stories in Iran. They just um, they're so hard on them. They just uh, and they when they wrestle, they wrestle 150%. Yeah. Well, the first, the first week I wrestled with them, um, uh, I, got, I got suplex. <laughs> and, um, my, and my... And my... Um, it's just, just for injuries and stuff like that. So, but, uh, but... Their stuff in Iran, they said they, they just... It's, it's their, their coaches that are hard on them. And, like, uh, relentlessly. But, uh, and they... He was 150 percent with their takedowns, everything. So working with these guys and, and kind of, you know, kind of, uh, um, fight came as an awesome. You know, you do as you, you know, 100 percent, 150 percent, and and if it's 150 percent, so um, every so it's been perfect. And, and and they're over here doing um doing their stand up, you know, improving their stand up and that as well. Because but one of them is a is a pro boxer. Um, not a me, the other guy is a pro boxer, uh, Masood. So, um, and he's a he's a high level pro, pro boxer and uh, and again, horse uh, freestyle as well. So these guys, they are both, uh, but you know, it's uh, it's crazy. So, and I've been watching YouTube uh, stuff when he was a world championships and won the gold, you know, two gold medals and stuff like that. And it's just it's just crazy the, the level these guys have. Well, so I appreciate you coming on here and spending some time with us. I know it's been a, a long day for you and the time change and all that, you know, took us a while for you and I to get connected, but I appreciate you spending some time with us here on MMA Oddsbreaker. Good luck and have fun. I can't wait to see this fight uh, against you and Walt Harris. It's going to be a great, a great battle. I love your stand up. Um, we'll talk to you. We'll definitely be talking to you after the fight's over. Cool. Thanks, Frank. And it's good to uh, see you after a few years uh, back yeah. in the days at El Segundo. <laughs> it's funny. I actually, uh, John Donahue called me, uh, called me uh, yesterday. He's in yeah. uh, he's in LA. He just hit me up all of a sudden out of the blue. I haven't talked to him in a few years either. So it's been a good yeah, a good uh, a good week for the Australians and, and me getting reconnected for sure. Yeah, I've been listening to John for a while. So you can do see him and see him. Yeah. All right. So we'll talk yeah. to you soon, bud. All right. Thanks, Frank. Bye.